half my family are Jews. So, but um, no, but see, you don't know who you can trust anymore. I mean, um, I come from an era. I mean, I come from an era when I had teachers like John Chancellor and, and Chet Huntley and David Brinkley and um, and and um, uh, Edward R. Merle. I mean, I had Pulitzer Prize winners like Attila Rogers St. John. I mean, I even had a Pulitzer Prize winner. You know, I mean, I mean, she's probably even heard of this one. Hemingway? Hemingway was a Pulitzer Prize winner? William Faulkner? Yeah. They actually, they were a couple of my teachers. Really? Yeah, they, they, they come and they, you know, they did, they like to teach people about things. Wow. So they were, they were good. They instructed by simply saying, you know, write. That was it. You know, they, they say, you know, how, they're like, well, how did you, you know, come upon this? Well, I was sitting on top of a hill and the sun was rising. The sun also rises. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and then they go, you know, William Faulkner, uh, the grapes of wrath. Well, I was getting the wrath from my mother out in the middle of a grape field. <gasps> the grapes of wrath. Yeah. So that's basically really how you get titles for things. You know, that but, is kind of funny. Yeah, but that's how you come with titles. They learned, they, but you'd ask them, you said, you know, basically what happened was these were, these were in the olden days when you actually had, you know, the, you didn't have the great big lecture rooms. You basically, you, you know, the, 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 the people that come in, they'd be the guest teacher for like, um, uh, you know, a week or two weeks or something like that. You'd put all the chairs in the center and then the guy would walk around talking to people about, about things. They talk about the business, mm -hmm. and they talk, you know, they give you, you know, like Edward R. Myrtle. I don't know why the hell you people want to be in this business. I don't make any money at it. And if you're in it, I'm going to make less. So, mm -hmm. and they tell it, or, you know, if you want to make money in this world, go be a plumber. And, yeah, I've heard that one before. Yeah. But um, those were people that believed, um, I, I, you know, I knew everything was going bad when, um, um, you know, the back on when Nightline was on and Ted Koppel said, our job is not to report the, the, the news. Our job is just to go out and report the story and let people decide what the news is. Well, you know, no. Well, you know, I think it's part not, of the biggest challenge is that the news media in it, general is more let's say biased yeah. than it used to be in the past. Uh, uh, but she, she was involved with it. The night, the last of the, 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 the day, the last of the media died, the news of the Jim and Nico died was uh, when Michael Jackson died. I mean, she went out and covered the thing. She's going up, you know, going over to place and, you know, going to these places where Jackson was and all of that stuff, like all the other good reporters out there. And all the news channels for, I mean, we're talking one of the, for a solid week, they're doing nothing but Michael Jackson coverage. They did a lot. And we, they, we did hardly anything compared to what everybody well, else no, was doing. Yeah, but we did enough, so we only have so much time, and it was, it was almost all, other than OCAM, everything else was Michael Jackson coverage. Well, because I remember people that worked for TV stations that basically they staked out the cemetery. Yeah. And people that his home. I mean, she, she home. actually she went to his home. She went by there, drove over, parked, and walked around. So, uh, she also knew. She also knew. We also knew some of the people that rented one of his places too. So. Mm -hmm. So we've got there, but um, uh, it, it's just it, it's just. The news media is as much responsible for the recession that we're in as anybody else. You think so? Yeah. Because uh, they don't report the truth anymore. Uh, if they report that, okay, uh, a recession ends when you let it end. And the, the press is not, okay, the press on the right figures it's a good, it's a good pounding thing on, on the people on the left. The people on the left can't let the recession end because it means they have to stop giving money to people to support them. Well, here's part of the challenge is, is the news media is not, I was going to say it's not public broadcasting, it's not publicly funded. And so what they do is they sell advertising. Yeah, uh, right? uh, this is, okay, here's the thing. I, I, I'm featured, I featured with my, you know, Hurricane Irene, Dick, Peter, and the Wolf. That, that's, I, actually, I'm getting, I actually, I've been, they're talking about the, you know, the hurricane, okay, when it says the Hurricane Irene debacle, think, Peter, look, that's me that's out there, you know, I wrote that little thing, folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're talking about me on network television, which, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm used to that because, 
you know, my, my hair is getting long again. My hair is in a few, another week it'll be down to here, and then they can make fun of me and say that I lied again. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, the news media no longer, it's, um, uh, I also go back to the days, most people don't realize that Telly Savalas was a newsman at ABC, and he worked under Brune Arledge. Brune Arledge was the head of the sports department and also the head of the news department, and both of them, that when they merged into one unit, they all of a sudden saw that you could do things with both. I mean, look at the fact that, um, uh, the, I can't remember what is the guy's name, the, he won an Emmy Award for his coverage of the killing of the athletes in Berlin. So he did? Yeah, the help, John McKay, yeah. yeah he, he remember he, uh, he won, because he was on the spot when the Muslim terrorists killed all the people. And he was, that's when, all of a sudden, the line started going like this, and entertainment and the news division started going like this because they all of a sudden decided news could make money. Well, the other part is, is a lot of times the news department is part of the entertainment. But it is all under the same banner now. They put them all together. It's just Before like, they used to be separate. It's what did in Dan Rather over at CBS. Yeah. Okay. Dan Rather is a lot of things, but Dan Rather would not go out to do a hatchet job on somebody because he's old world journalist. But Dan Rather, they wanted to get rid of Rather and they knew Rather had this problem. He didn't exactly read over the material that he got. You know, he's like, you know, he, you know, he, he was like Barack Obama in the teleprompter you put up there. And George Bush has been charged with manslaughter in the death of a whole bunch of innocent children. Right. And then after it done, did I just say George Bush had been charged with manslaughter? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's right there. Oh, that must be true. That's got that. What that's when Rather went down the drain. That Rather was reading instead of doing his work. Um, that sounds. It goes back to that that uh, movie Anchorman. Yeah. Right. It was based upon uh, I think George Putnam, who basically famous. You know. <laughs> Yeah. It was on the teleprompter, he read it. If it was on the teleprompter, he read it. I mean, they'd made fun of that character for decades. That's why they joke about them calling talking heads. Talking heads because they're supposed to just read what's on the teleprompter. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I watched them making fun of, you know, and they said, this is Barack Obama and his job speech. The Republicans are responsible, along with George Bush, because they caused this problem. And he's got to be teleprompter to teleprompter to teleprompter. And, the, and they say, well, why don't you see the teleprompter in front of him? Because when he goes that, the teleprompter goes down below the level and it's basically up like this. So, and then when he goes this way, the teleprompter comes back up and he starts to turn, the teleprompter goes down. It's all choreographed. The prompter It's like up. a dance. Yeah, but it's like a dance. It's a teleprompter dance. No, but um, the, the financial people are supposed to be the least corrupted of the bunch. It's we supposed saw, to be. We saw Neil Cavuto basically chewing up a guy for no reason over at Gibson. Totally chewing that him up. That was kind of... I mean, he went on the program because he thought he was going to get a fair deal. And boy, did he not get a fair deal from Neil Caputo. Yeah, this was Henry, the, the CFO founder? Yeah, he is the CEO. He, he, he's the CEO. He, he basically, he saved Gibson. And they, they did find out. Well, they didn't... They, they, they seized all the merchandise, don't intend to get back. And there's never been... There was no complaint filed against them. There was no complaint filed. And somebody else that is doing the same type of thing. But they support Obama. Did not get raided. But they also support Obama. Uh, they, they said the difference between me and the other people is I actually work here and their work is being done out of this country and brought in. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, and they're using the food from the same people. But the Indian government did not file a complaint because it's old wood. I mean, okay, we're going to file a complaint, but we have a bathroom with an endangered species on the wall. Oh no. Oh, they'll get us. I mean, my God, that's an endangered species. Of course, it was a sheet of veneer made from a log that had been sitting around for about a hundred years. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they do. They pick up... Well, you know, why, why would like a government start complaining if they're the ones that are doing the selling? They're doing the selling. There was no complaints mm -hmm. done because it was only an endangered species if you go cut the thing down. If it's on the ground and you've got... It's just like... Uh, You've got a warehouse full of veneers, yeah. right? And the veneers are, they, they basically take the wood and they slice it really thin. Yeah. And then and it's stored and cured and all of these yeah, things. Yeah, it's done. It's, it could come from government controlled warehouses. And they filed no complaints. They just wanted to teach him a lesson. You don't support, you don't support people like, uh, like Huckabee. Yeah, but that was 
was even the last election. That's not even this election. It doesn't make any difference. I, I understand that basically. Uh, you know, it, how come he's not even running? Yeah, but he's an independent and he wants to teach independence a lesson. He also wants to make certain that a supporter of his guitar company, you know, uh, basically gains an upper hand on Gibson. So mm -hmm. that's how it works, for legal favors. But yeah, uh, I mean, we can tell. Um, uh, it, it just like we don't know what to do. I mean, we're in the middle of an expansion period at the same time that everybody else is going backwards, and we're, you know, we're 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 trying to expand. We're trying desperately to expand at a time when you can't borrow. There's no way you, you, can't, you, borrow can't, you can't borrow any money. You can't borrow any money. You can't get small business loans. I mean, you know, it's not like we don't have you know collateral. It didn't make any difference because the banks aren't loaning money. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're not loaning money because the Obama administration doesn't want them to loan money. Oh, but Obama threatens every bank in this nation if they make loans. Well, guess what they're going to do? They're, they're not, not going to make loans. They're not going to make loans. The only, okay, what's going on is that the market goes up and the market only goes up. Market goes up on low volume and down on high volume. Low volume meaning they're dealing amongst themselves. The people. They're making tons of money on Wall Street. They're buying themselves. They're buying, okay, they're, they're buying this company, and they're buying that company, they're selling this company to build, and it's like, you got a deck of cards, and they're just taking the cards and handing them out to people on Wall Street to make it look like they're making money. And who's, who's spent, who, where that money coming from? The federal government is providing the money to all of these businesses through TARP and other things in order to do all their buying. Mm -hmm. And when that money is gone, you know, like it is right now, everything is starting to dry up. The whole world has been that way, but there's just, um, you know, we're, we're screwed. Until, I mean, I, like I said, I heard one of the people talking, and said, you're going to see a third party candidate as president this time, because there's no one, um, they said, there's nobody out there that isn't going to screw you. <laughs> that is the way it works. No one, they all, uh, the Republican Party, is going to spend money if you put one of their people in. If you put Obama in, he's going to spend more money. So you're going to have to put somebody in that actually listens to the people. 